huge year. <laughs> insane, insane personal production. So uh, going to dive right into learning what's ahead of you, man, because, you know, I know you probably would agree with me. Everything that happened last year happened last year. So great achievement, not trying to undermine it. But, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to your growth in 2021. So if you can just kind of tell us a little bit for some of the people that don't know you. Um, now they do. Number one producer 2020. Um, you know, what? How, how's, how's been your 20, 2020? What allowed you to actually get this this kind of massive results? And also, are you happy about them? You know, just kind of kind of share your excitement with us, man. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I think um, this year was such a amazing and crazy year for for all of us. Um, it was just wild on a lot of levels. Um, really, one of the good things about this pandemic, this is where you truly say, take a negative and turn it into a positive. I really like I had the goal of doing a million and I was going to work hard and, you know, have non negotiable schedule. But when that hit, it's like, all right, what else are we doing? Like, we might as well just go run more appointments. More people are going to be home. More people are going to need us. So, you know, you get into that, into, you know, the March, um, April, May. And I think FFL as a whole, we really made a, a conscious effort and decision to say, we're not going to let this slow us down. We're going to speed up during it. And then we're going to be better off for it. Um, so for that, I think, honestly, that probably took me to the million. Just because, like, you know how many people more people I probably saw that were home during that time. I mean, I had my biggest months in March, April, and May. So I think that was a big catalyst, um, you know, increasing my lead budget. You know, at the end of the day, I've always just out spent, you know, like if you want to get to numbers and you want to get to goals, you can do it as long as you just outspend it. Um, and then the money comes back tenfold. Um, going sure. into this year, um, this year is going to be a complete transitional year because, Doing a million three is cool, but having a million three of an agency is even cooler. So it's a lot of learning for me and a lot of growth for this year. Absolutely, man. Just to, just to, so people understand on this call what it really takes from the lead flow standpoint, you know, to do what you did. So what, 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 what was your spending right after you hit those three big months? So what, did, what, what, what did that look like? I spent probably 10,000 a week on leads. Um, you know, if I write, if I spend 10, and then I write a hundred, it's 10%. It's the same as we kind of say on, you know, everybody like, Hey, if I spend five, I'm going to write 5,000 a week. So I just kind of upped it. And I have just always been diverse in, in the lead flow, you know, I'm lucky to have a lot of mortgage. Then you get the instant leads that came out um, and just kind of, you know, filling everything together. It just gave me 30 appointments a week. Awesome. All right. Well, that's yeah. And you, you said just to clarify, you said ten thousand a week. Was it ten thousand a week or ten thousand a month? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say a month. Sorry. Yeah, not ten thousand a week. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't need to give people a heart attack on the call. <laughs> You're good, man. I mean, ten percent. I mean, my ratio is different. My ratio is more like fifteen, sixteen, seventeen percent on the lead spend. So, obviously. Uh, you know, we, we operating on, on a different level and, and we're not going to talk forever about, because you mentioning new achievements, new goals, new levels about, about personal production on this call, uh, you know, because it's all out there. There's so much training about it. Um, you know, and there's so much training from you, but, but two things, number one, if people want to learn from you and if people want to, you know, watch some of your videos. Uh, obviously, they probably want to. I'd be, I'd be crazy stupid not to want to watch what you have to say. If you're a number one producer, but if they want to do that, where do they go? Do they go to FFLHealthAndWealth.com? Yeah, we yeah. have, um, we have a YouTube channel as well. It's uh, HW-FFL.com. That's the actual YouTube channel. But you can get it off of the regular website as well. Awesome, awesome. All right. So, and just to wrap up on the personal production side, uh, what would be just your one advice to people on this call if they want to, obviously, I, I know also the reasoning behind of why, why, why you did what you did, but if people want to hit Hall of Fame, they want to hit, you know, something close to a million, what would be your number one advice to them? I think the biggest thing that anybody can do is you have your big goal around if that's Hall of Fame, a million, whatever it is you then have to understand what the appointment count looks like. 
if you run 30 appointments, you, there's no way, in my opinion, you shouldn't be a Hall of Fame producer. Like if you consistently did that every single week to then issue pay about 34000 a month, there's r- literally no way you can't. I think the reason people fall short of their goals is because they don't buy enough leads to then give them enough activity um, to get enough appointments. And then I'd say the second part of that is people don't door knock enough. I mean, if you did not get enough appointments in the next two days, the way I've always looked at it is I need to go out and hunt every day I'm in the field. So I have to make it happen. That might mean I have to keep dialing. That means I'm going to have to door knock. If I, if I booked five and I need eight, um, I think not enough people do that. Top producers do it. If you give yourself as, as many at bats as possible, you can't lose because there's a couple things that happen. Your day flows a lot better. You're going to get better in the house because you got to get up to the hundred appointments quicker. You're going to be more comfortable. You're not going to care when people know if you go out and have two appointments and I go out and have nine appointments, you don't have a really good shot. I do because I have nine and you have two. Um, so I think the activity piece, it really gets overblown. I also think people will put things in the way of their dial time. I mean, I have agents that call me between eight and one and I just go like this, like, don't dial me, don't text me, don't call me. I'm, I'm dialing the phone and I don't know why you're not. Cause that's weird. So I think you have to protect the dial time. And I think all this stuff to being a top producer is crazy boring but people make this out to be like, it has to be so magnificent and magical. It really isn't. You just have to, you have to be disciplined in what you're doing and don't let anything get in the way. Like nothing's going to get in the way of you and your dial time. Then nothing's going to get in the way of you and your appointment count. And if you, if you're just not good enough on the phone yet, you got to door knock and exhaust the leads and you will find gold. It's out there. You just got to be willing to look for it. Absolutely. man. Well, congrats once again. Uh, awesome Thanks. year. Your son was born. Uh, congrats as well, uh, Dominique. So that's that's awesome. So 2020, in fact, was really, 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 really good for you. So um, I mean, can be can be more happier for you, man. So um, all right. Well, now I, I also noticed something something cool, but wanted to know what 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 is the significance behind it? You wearing this 20k hat. Can you tell us oh, about okay. that, why are you wearing it? So what's it stand for? It's trying to get my new agents to 20K, making okay. that like your goal to start. So this way they have great positive cash flow to kind of kick off their career here. Got it. Got it. So can you break down the psychology of this 20K? What does it, what does it represent? So like what's, what, what's it stand for and why, why, why 20K? I think if you can focus on 20K, after obviously you focused on your, um, your appointments and your activity, you're going to be highly um, profitable to start. So let's say you spent like when I'll go back to my first month, I spent about 4,000 on leads. I just put it all in. I didn't necessarily have it sitting around, but I listened to mentors, went to the convention and really listened to what they said. So I spent four and I issued about 21 and I've never had a cash flow problem since. And all I've literally been able to do from that that spawned off is spend more on lead. So obviously I wasn't spending 10,000 a month, month two, but I went four and then I hit five pretty quick. And then I went six to seven and then it just kind of snowballed because I don't, I never had a cash flow problem. So I'm trying to get new agents to get to that number because if you keep reinvesting in leads, you'll never have a cash flow problem ever. You'll just keep compiling and reinvesting, and that's the way you'll win doing this. Sense. Well, you're saying that anybody can do 20k. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. All right, man. So 2021. So what are you expecting from it? What are you going to be working for? What are you shooting for? What are your goals? This year for me. <laughs> We got to be at 500,000 in the next two months as an agency. We got to be 750 in the next probably four to five. And we got to definitely be eclipsing a million within a year. If we do not do that, then I did something wrong. Um, And it's a complete um, switch because, you know, last year I'm, I'm wearing, obviously we all both wear both hats. I'm shooting for the million. We're doing a lot to grow. We did some good. We did some things that we learned from, 
Uh, we definitely made some movement, you know, got close to about that 400 mark where it's kind of where we're kind of teetering, um, but really trying to pour more time into the actual agency building, pour more money into it, just writing enough so that I can pay the bills essentially, you know, like staff recruiters, different uh, ways that we attack social media and, and different ads uh, setups that we have. It's really about the agency. Um, me doing a million is cool. The agency doing over a million is really, really cool. Um, so that's where my head is out. And, and I need to get better at it. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I think at the end of the day, we all look at ourselves every day when we wake up and say, what could we do better? You know, and that's really where my focus is this year. Yeah, no, for sure. No doubt. So and just 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 take a take a pause, guys, and, and think about it for a second. Number one producer made on his own pen over over 1.3 million in one year which is there's there's probably not even an annuity there maybe maybe one small one as far as i remember I right thirty thousand dollar annuity. <laughs> <laughs> that's three thousand ap okay <laughs> in that 1.3 million there's three thousand dollar in, in commission uh well, a little, little less but anyways three thousand ap for uh annuity sale the rest is simplified issue you know just just rapid fire every single day every single week which is again it's awesome but take a take a moment guys and, and think about it so if you know steve's trying to get involved with something you know that requires him learning your skill number one number two uh you know it's it's not as easy i'm pretty sure you'd agree that it's way easier to produce on your own than building an agency but he's still going for it because recruiting is the answer so can you break that down that concept for us why why is it like what why do you need that? I mean, you can, for all I know, you can, you can just run real hard for five years and retire, you know, and then invest your money, do whatever, and, and, and not have to do anything, but you're trying to build an agency. What's, what's in it for you, Steve? There's a couple of things. I think number one, the challenge of it, because it's something that I'm looking to do. A lot of people have done, obviously yourself and many others who they do it at a very good level. So to me, the challenge, uh, the second thing would be, I think obviously you can get pretty rich selling, but I think the way we're structured now with integrity, there's a wealth dynamic with um, what you can do on the agency building side. I think probably the bigger piece of all of it is how many people you can help. Like I obviously helped a lot of clients with insurance, um, but I want to help more agents feel the financial freedom that I'm able to feel. Um, and, and I think there's so many good people out in the world and so many people right now that are out of work. Um, a lot from the industry I used to be in, in restaurants. I mean, hell, I've had people, you know, I had somebody call me today from high school who lives in Florida and wants to come to the convention. I haven't spoken to him in like 30 years. And uh, I think helping a lot of people and bringing them along for the ride when their industries have really, you know, dried up, I think that for me motivates me now more than anything else. I get more excited on a, on a new sale or a first sale than I'm going to get on me selling a $300 a month policy because it, there's more to it. That whole family is, is changed. You know, it's not just my family, it's so many other families. So that's really my biggest motivation kind of moving forward this year. Sure. All right. Well, you definitely earned your logo a long time ago and it's a beautiful, beautiful logo, man. So, uh, green and black this i mean i i i just uh, actually i i like it very aesthetically looking and representing health and wealth so you earned our logo so you, you know how to be more than qualified to speak on that topic we have a contest going on right now where there's 15 people either fighting to get that logo like half of them seven people maybe more after this call you know maybe someone's gonna say heck why not me right so that's 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 all we say there is i mean i i, I said that to myself and February 2018 in Dallas during that convention. I said, why not me? You know, I, I hope this, you know, this call and, you know, some, some people will say, why not me? I want to build as well. And they're going to go after this logo. They're going to go after sales manager. What advice do you have to them? How, how to get to that logo as quick as humanly possible? I think you have to really exhaust talking to a lot of people. Um, utilizing social media now. I think you can see it in so many groups in FFL. Social media is where it's at. So I think if you can leverage that, number one, 
and talk to a lot of people, talk to warm market people. Don't be afraid to post stuff, post often, tag people, and then really exhaust sharing the opportunity with people. It should literally at the end of your day, you should be exhausted from talking. It should be, I'm talking to clients to fund the business. I'm talking to agents. The other thing I'd say is, you know, from a 20 K perspective, if you hit 20, immediately you should be thinking about having a staff. I think everybody wishes they would have done it earlier. I do. Um, I'm looking, I'm getting more now. Um, I wish I would have done that sooner. So I think if you can really exhaust yourself in talking to people and sharing the opportunity, getting a little bit of help, you know, one staff person, I'm not saying get seven, but if you had one staff person that's going to help you recruit and help you share the opportunity with more people, it's literally like paying, you know, like a policy a month and you'll, you'll get to those numbers quicker. Like it's just the fact of the matter. You're only gonna be able to do so much yourself, you know, from a production and then from a recruiting side. So if you really want that fast, that would be probably one of the first things I'd do. I'd have a budget for recruiting out of what you write personally. And then I'd have a staff that's going to help me organize it, get people through the pipe, get people contracted and get people writing. Okay. That's awesome, man. Good advice. Uh, very informative. What I'm hearing is uh, personal production is of the most important, of course. Otherwise, how are you going to fund the business? Get staff as soon as, as soon as humanly possible. And and three, still don't 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 slow down your recruiting because you're not at 20k or you don't have the staff. Still utilize social media in the war market to actually build your team. Because I've heard from one agent recently, he said, "Well, I need to bring my bank account to the right situation," which he produced. He was impressed. Day one, produced 4k. He's like, "I still need to bring my bank account to good condition before I start hiring." And I said, "Well, isn't it something that's going to help you as well, just a little bit, you know?" Uh, but at the end of the day, what I heard is social media and war market. Reach out to everybody, you know, be on the phone all the time. And that's good, man. When did you hire for a staff? I got oh, for a staff a little over a year ago. I definitely waited too long. I wish I would have done it sooner um, because the other thing you also have to understand, obviously we've all, you know, hired, you know, you hire people and their people and they may work out and they may not. Um, so you want to kind of start that process. You also don't want to get discouraged, you know, like this can be a frustrating business, but it's really only frustrating if you don't have enough activity, whether that's selling or hiring, you have to just, you always have to keep doing it. And it's interesting. You say that about someone saying, you know, all oh, my bank account needs to look a certain way. If you look at the entrepreneurs in the history of the world, right? People didn't get a company of like Apple because they had a lot of money they were like just sitting on. You know, they, they basically took a risk, just like we take a risk on leads. And it's, it's interesting, even when you look at Family First Life, Sean has said flat out, he had to grow in order to pay the top compensation up to 140. He had to. So it was basically, there was no, it was all in. Like there was no other way to do it. You should structure your business the same way overspend and get crazy uncomfortable with leads and with hiring and you will grow by default because there's no way you're not going to work hard enough for it to do it for you. There's just no way. Awesome. And, and if you want to hire and you want to some, you want some help, maybe, maybe not, not one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but some videos you can think of that people can look up online and, and, and just watch somebody that, that speaks on the topic of recruiting better than anybody else. Yeah, I think uh, obviously Dave Richard right now, um, I just watched his podcast with Mark. Um, it's interesting you say that I do a call with my, I have like six, you know, quote unquote, almost managers right now. Every week we dissect a recruiting call. Um, love him. Anything with Dave Wichard, anything with Grady. I think it's just like finding top producers. I mean, when I started, I wanted to watch everything that Ivan did because Ivan was, you know, writing, you know, a ton of insurance. I wanted to learn from him. Same thing on the hiring side, Nick Ayala, Dave Wichard, Grady Paulson. Those are the guys who have, um, have really grown the quickest. So I literally just try and watch every single thing that they have out. Awesome. And you said something interesting. So you have recruiting call with your team where you watch a video and you, you help them understand that video better. You kind of dissect it with them. Yeah. So yeah. actually we're doing it today at two 30. So I'll have them watch it. And then we go, 
you know, five minutes each, what we took out of it, what we're going to implement from it. Um, because to me, you know, my training, obviously, when I started was all I got to figure out how to sell, how to sell, how to sell. I mean, I'm not by any stretch saying I know everything about selling. But right now, I need to know how to how to hire. So I'm, I'm trying to watch all that stuff with them because they're trying to figure that out. And I think it's it's helping because it's it's showing them here's the roadmap. It's here. Like it's not magical. It's just it's right here. Let's consume it. Let's go through it together as a team, and then we'll take the best practices out of it and implement it. Got it. What What are some of your favorite questions that you ask your your you know prospects, people you get in touch with that are you know that they interviewing? How do you structure the call? Is it is is your higher questions based on whether you know you know this person or not, or how how, how do you do that? One of the well, things I try to focus on is I don't want them to think it's easy and I don't want them to get completely like um, star eyed about, you know, the numbers of commission and issue paid. Like, yes, we'll talk about it. We'll lean on it. Yes, whatever. This one did 40 grand a month. I did a million, whatever. But what I want them to understand is that it's simple, not easy. And I really want to get to the root of how they're going to handle getting no show three times in a row and told no. And, and what are they going to do reacting off of that? Um, then I know if it's someone I really want to work with because anybody can work doing this when things are good, but not everybody can work doing this when things are bad. So I'm, I want to know who I'm getting in the foxhole with. I try to treat it like a real interview. Um, I want to, you know, let them know like my time is valuable as is yours. I want to make sure that this is the right fit for you. So this is what the days look like. You know, a million dollars is not glitz and glamour. A million dollars is a lot of hard work and grind and door knocking and getting told no and getting hung up on 30 times a dial session. So I need you to understand what that looks like. But if you can tell me that you're willing to do all that and you kind of understand it, then I know you're a player and you're someone that could actually um, do well doing this. So I try to really focus there. I almost want to scare them off in a sense. You know, I don't just want to hire the world and then they get into it and they, you know, they get told no three times and then all oh, the leads suck and this sucks and I quit, you know? <laughs> awesome. Well, that's definitely a, a good information uh, for us here. Now let's, uh, let's talk about annual convention that's coming up. And I know you putting all your resources into getting people in there, getting people there. Uh, I know that we do the same thing here. It's, just about three weeks away now um but we understand the magic of it it's the greatest recruiting and tool greatest training tool out there greatest i guess commitment tool because i mean my first convention in dallas as, as i was mentioning earlier that was unbelievable so I'm, I'm always coming back to next annual convention seeking that feeling you know what I'm saying? It's like I want to repeat it, and 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 there's nothing that's gonna that's gonna bring the same same exact feeling that I had back in 2018 when I when I went to the first one because it sold me completely, and I was like, why not me? Actually, it was over uh, on Saturday night. I actually changed my tickets and I left as soon as the main session was over. I didn't stay for the. Uh, uh, for the awards i'm like i'm not getting anything so why the heck should i stay i was so fired up i don't change my tickets and flew back early so i can wake up sunday and, and, and start grinding so but can you uh can you talk to us a little bit about importance of uh convention why people should get there and this concept of if you bring 10 agents to convention you're automatically going to have a hundred thousand dollar agency a month yeah, yeah. I mean, the convention is my God. You want to talk about the greatest investment I've probably ever made? Um, <laughs> the, what you learn there alone is so invaluable because what's cool about our convention, I felt when the, the first one I went to was it wasn't about like rah rah like like you had started the call right. Steve did one point three million. Okay, great. That was yesterday. Today, like I need to still dial because I didn't book enough appointments. Like we acknowledge it. Cool. We have an awards. It's great but it's kind of about like what's next, you know? And there's, um, there's just great tangible training teaching you how to do this. Like, it's not about let's just celebrate 
these amazing numbers and how much we've grown and then not teach anybody anything because that's a complete waste of everybody's time. So if you're on the fence, the fact of the matter is you won't be here this time next year. If you don't go to convention, like you just won't like, I, I hope I'm wrong, but, and I didn't create that line. Somebody did it on a call the other day for our team. Um, it's just the truth. You have to invest in yourself if it's going to cost you a hotel and a flight and some food and whatever it's going to be, it will be the best investment that you make in your business. And you, if you go to work, when you get back from it, you know, buy enough leads and do all the things that you're supposed to, there's no way you won't win. So if you're on the fence, get off the fence immediately and figure out what's going to make the most sense for you, you know, being, you know, obviously we're in the seven locations, you have to be there. There's just so much that, you learn. I mean, it's funny. You talked about annuities and obviously I, I should sit at the annuity seminar the whole time. Cause clearly I don't know how to write any, um, the year before I, I did write like a $300,000 one and I would have had no idea how to do that. And I think I did it when I got back, it was like two to three months after the convention. That was literally like, I don't know, 15 grand I made, like just because I sat in a meeting and listened to what they told me. And now you look at, okay, I issued 2 million in two years. That was because of the convention. It wasn't because like, you know, I magically just, you know, plucked this stuff out of thin air. I got a structure of what I needed to do. And I put myself around top people and ask questions. You know, I remember at the convention, Ivan, I was like chewing your ear off the first, the first year trying to figure out what the hell to do. And you were gracious enough to tell me. And that's what I think everybody here will do for you. So you got to get there bottom line for sure for sure yeah there's no doubt about it and what was uh kind of going through my mind not that i mean i'm a very humble guy but the first one i went i'm like yeah all these people can do it i can do it too i think that's major too you, you just get that feeling like you know okay so now now we're a team i gotta i gotta put in the time and not let anybody down these people were gracious enough to come here organize the event spend a lot of money you know um you know, anybody can do this. So, and that's, that's the feeling it brought to me, but uh, let's, let's keep talking about recruiting. So I know you guys big, your group is big on live dials. Why every single person on this call has to participate in the live dials uh, on the, on every, every single, every single dial day, Monday and Thursday. I think the biggest piece of it is the fact that it holds you accountable. Like, so if nothing else, if I see somebody's face at 8 a.m., with leads in front of them, they're not sleeping. So there's a, some accountability there. The second piece would be, you need to hear other people, you know, like I, I dial a lot on our hours and I'm trying to wean off, you know, where it's a lot more, you know, team than me, but like I get my ass kicked on the phone and I honestly, like, I didn't want to do it in the beginning. And now I'm glad I do because like, they're looking at me and they're like, Oh, okay. Like he deals with the same crap that we're dealing with. He just dials more and buys more leads. So I think it's good, you know, it's good sense of community. Um, especially, you know, obviously we have agents all over the place. So not everybody can go to a local office if you can, certainly it's great, but I think it's an, a really awesome thing to have the camaraderie with other people on your team where they're just hearing just all the different ways to handle all these different objections and how to get to the appointment. Yeah, for sure. That makes a ton of sense. By the way, guys, we do in our live dials, we've been doing them. Uh, we wish there was more activity. We, we, we actually, uh, we, we truly believe that's going to be, that's going to make a huge difference for a personal production. If you on it, and I know you get the link in your phones every single dial day, but uh, I, I, I think uh, absolutely everybody should be on it. So, uh, and, and Steve, what else, what else do you use in your, uh, like, let's talk on the system. So what, uh, like other than Slack, which everybody knows Slack and we, we pray Slack all the time. So can you talk about that and maybe something else your team's using to, uh, you know, to basically uh, in, in, in team building, training, things of that nature. And, and obviously if somebody's on, on this call is not on Slack yet, I urge you to join. So can you talk a little bit about power of Slack? Yeah, I love it because you're able to share a lot of different stuff um, at any time with the entire team. You know, if it's conventions, if it's training calls, um, I, I try to like, I'll just wake up in the morning and I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to send them out a 
an in-home or a door knock or a this or a that. And I think um, it goes a long way because people, that thing is dinging and they see, hey, let me, you know, look at this training. And then the, the other thing would be the sales. It, it, I think it also holds people accountable because it's like when I'm, when I see people on my team selling, I'm like, one, that's great. Two, what am I doing? Like, am I working as hard as they are right now? Um, and I think that's, it's like an accountability piece for the team. Um, it's good to have people in one place. Um, and then, you know, like a you know, website as well, you know, having, you know, some of the training videos and things there and just having like references for people, you know, I think um, where you can lead someone and say, hey, this is where you should kind of go to start and kind of look at these things. And then let's double back and have a conversation from what you learned from it. I think that's powerful because then you also don't have to explain everything a million times to a million people. You can let the system do the work a little bit for you. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this call. Uh, I'll add a couple more things here um, that if you guys need help, we don't know it and, and, unless you reach out. We don't know what we don't know. So if you need anything, uh, as I said, my, our, ba- our biggest position here is that we just need to introduce you to Alpha Fowl and get out of the way because it's so pretty, so straightforward and simple. Uh, however, if you need any help, uh, please reach out. Let us know what you're dealing with. We're happy to help. That's that's why we're here. We all invested in, in your success here. We want you to win, truly. Steve won't want you to win. That's why he's he's here on the call today. Otherwise, he wouldn't be. You know, he's, he cares. I mean, like, please accept that. He does care about your success here. We we so grateful of your time, Steve. Thank you so much. couple big focuses, again, just to reiterate this month, annual convention, register if he don't. You don't have, you're not going to be able to get in in the building. You're not going to have a seat due to regulations this year. You bring people over, which probably makes sense, especially if you're building. If you just want to introduce people to this awesome company, that's great as well. They need to register separately. That's a big focus for this month as well as the contest. If you feel like you wanted to participate in the race for a logo, let us know. We're going to get you in. And thanks for being on this call. And Steve, if you can just leave us with a couple words of wisdom. Give us a shot to catapult us yeah, to 21 and we're going to wrap. I, I appreciate you guys. Um, it's very, very motivating seeing everybody and serve the people and everything that you're doing and, and everybody on your team. I, I would just say, you know, this year, it's such a, I think an even more monumental year, 2021 than 2020 was. Um, just go a hundred percent all in. Like meaning there's no backup plan. I think it's the only way you're going to have success doing this. If you give it every single thing you have and you go all in financially, emotionally, physically, spiritually, there's no way you're not going to win. Um, Be willing to do things that you might have never been willing to do. Um, Like, you know, running travel trips and running late appointments on the weekends and this, that, and the other. Like if you do all those things now, you will get paid 10 times um, down the road uh, for all your efforts. So I would just leave you guys with that. And I appreciate you all.